So, today we're going to talk about hip shifts. What they are, why they happen, and what you can do about it. Follow me. So a hip shift is basically defined as the inability of one lower extremity or one leg to accept weight. And we see this commonly in people following an injury to their legs, or we can even see this in the absence of injury. Now that we know what it is, we're gonna go into why it happens. And then we're gonna go into what are some of the things that you can do to fix it. Let's talk about the first point here, technique. Probably the most important one because if you don't have this, it doesn't matter how many strength exercises, how many, how many mobility exercises you do or how much you change your positioning. If you don't have the appropriate technique and if you don't master your squat pattern, patterns and the motor control, your ability to perform the movement and, and for your ability for your muscles, your joints and your nerves to perform coordinated movement patterns, then you are still gonna have a hip shift. So this is the one that you should be focusing on the most. So you got movement, proficiency, or practice. And then you have motor control or coordination. Coordination of bones, muscles, joints, and nerves to perform precise movement patterns. So what are some of the exercises that you can do in order to master the technique and eventually get rid of the hip shift? The first thing that you can do is start squatting in front of a mirror. Now, this one, you have to be really careful because you don't want to start depending on the mirror to squat, especially if you're a competitor, you're obviously not gonna be squatting in a competition in front of a mirror, but at least for the beginning phases of trying to get rid of the hip shift, I would recommend that you squat in front of a mirror and really focus on the way that you're performing the movement and try to make changes uh, during your squat instead of afterwards when you watch uh, when you watch a video. Or it makes it really, really difficult to change your pattern at that point. And then the second thing that you can do is you can try different squat variations. My two favorite ones are the tempo squat and a pause squat at the bottom. So for the tempo squat, all you're gonna do is slow the speed of the movement from top to bottom by at least a four second count. So from the top, just count four, three, two, one, and then accelerate up as you usually would in a squat. What that's gonna allow you is to really focus on how you're performing the movement and how the movement is feeling so you can ensure that you're spreading your weight in a balanced way from one leg to the other. And then the second one that you can do is a pause squat. So in a pause squat, you'll do the descent the same way that you would do a regular squat but you will pause at the bottom. You can do it for as long as you want, but I usually do them for two to four seconds. All right, now that we got the technique right, let's move into the second point, which is strength. This might be an obvious one for a lot of people, um, but we're gonna cover some of the exercises that you can do uh, both before you lift or after you lift as accessories in order to ameliorate the shift. Usually it happens because of a discrepancy from, of strength from one leg to the other. So what you want to do is you can add exercises before you even begin squatting. So you can prep the movement and prep each leg individually and make sure that each leg is generating the same amount of force, the same amount of power, so that it translates into your squat the same way, both legs producing the same amount of force. All right, the first exercise that we're gonna cover is a single leg squat to a box. All you're gonna do is grab a kettlebell or a weight, a dumbbell, stagger your feet and what you want to do is you want to focus on putting all of your weight on the leg that's behind you essentially the leg that's in front of you is just functioning as a, as an anchor just for balance so you want to focus all of your weight on that back leg sit back into the box and come back up the second exercise that we're going to cover is a staggered stance squat you want to always focus on the leg that's behind all you're going to do is place one of your feet diagonal to the other focus all of your energy and attention on that back leg. Grab a weight in the goblet position, either dumbbell or a kettlebell, and you're gonna squat and come back up, up to 90 degrees, focusing mostly on the back leg. 
These exercises are great to perform before your workout because they're not gonna really tire you out or burn you out, especially if you do them with not a lot of weight and not a lot of sets. So my recommendation is to do these one to two sets of 10 to 15 reps with minimal weight. Something that's challenging, but not something that's gonna burn you out and um, mess you up for your workout afterwards. The two final exercises that I'm gonna discuss can be done with more weight, and you can actually do these after your workout. The first one we're gonna talk about is the uh, Bulgarian split squat. So for this exercise, you're gonna place one of your legs on a bench behind you, and you can put your front leg as far or as close to the bench as you want. Just keep in mind that the closer you keep that leg into the bench, the more you're gonna feel it in your, in your quads, and it's gonna become a more quad dominant uh, lunge or squat. And the farther you are from the bench, the more hip dominant, so the, the more you're gonna feel it on your, on your hip extensors, your, your glutes and your hamstrings. So you can do them however you want. Maybe you can alternate them, um, but the premise is the same. Most of the weight should be distributed on the front leg. Finally, you can do lunges. You really can do any variation of lunges. The concept still remains the same. It's to try to balance the discrepancy between each leg. Next, we have joint mobility. An obvious one is mobility restrictions at the level of the hip, but one that is commonly overlooked are mobility restrictions at the ankle. So we're gonna talk about both of those. So what happens is if you have decreased motion, range of motion or mobility at one hip, specifically for either internal rotation or external rotation, what's gonna happen is that at the bottom of the squat, one hip is gonna be able to open up or close up more and the other one's gonna be more stuck. So that's what's gonna be manifested at the bottom of the squat. That's what you're gonna see. You're gonna come to the bottom and one hip's gonna be able to open up more than the other and then you're just gonna push up. And that is definitely, that's different than a strength discrepancy or a technique dis discrepancy. It's just gonna be a matter of you applying the scientific method so you can figure out exactly which one of these pertains to you. Or you can also do a combination of them and figure out with trial and error, which is the one that you need to do more. One of the exercises that I'm gonna show you is the hip 90-90. Not only this is, a great, is this a great exercise to improve your external rotation, internal rotation of your hip, but it's also a great assessment tool that you can see, that you can use in order to figure out whether or not you have a mobility restriction in your hip. So for the hip 90-90, all you're gonna do is you're gonna lay on the floor. You're gonna place your feet in front of you um, a little bit wider than hip width. And all you're gonna do, you're gonna drop them to one side. What you're gonna wanna see is that your both your front leg and your back leg form a 90 degree angle to keep your hip bones on the floor as much as possible. A progression of this exercise is gonna be to uh, take your hands off the floor and trying to incorporate core control. The second portion of the equation, what we were talking about, was a mobility discrepancy at the level of the ankle. So that's gonna manifest itself in the same way. If you have one ankle that allows you to go deeper than the other, imagine if this is the one that's more restricted and this is the one that has more motion. At the bottom, what it's gonna look like is something like this. So this one's gonna be able to bend further and this one's gonna be stuck here and I'm gonna, this is what I'm gonna look like, right? It's not so obvious for you if it's not something that you can pick up just from a quick video or from someone pointing it out. If you don't know if that's where you need to be to get started, you can do this quick ankle range of motion assessment that I'm gonna show you. So all you need is a wall and what you're gonna do, you're gonna start with your toe against the wall and you're gonna try to bring your knee towards the wall. If you can do that, progressively start bringing the ankle further and further against the wall until your heel comes off the ground. So that would be it for me, about there. So and then you're gonna mark that and then you're gonna do the same with your, with your other and then you're gonna see, let's see if mine are symmetrical. You can do that quick test to determine which ankle is more restricted and then which ankle you need to work on the most if it's not too obvious for you. But one exercise that you can do in order to fix this is uh, joint mobility utilizing a band. So what you're gonna wanna do, place it right below. So these are your medial and your lateral malleoli. And you wanna place that band right below, below that. Lunge forward, letting the band kind of pull your foot backwards. You can even progress that to doing a, an actual lunge. And the more that you can push your knee forward, the more aggressive the stretch is gonna get. 
And finally, positioning. There's really not a lot for me to say about this one, uh, but it's just a matter of you being um, more aware of where you're putting your feet. If you're pointing one foot out, if you're pointing one foot in, if, you're, if you have one leg wider than the other, it's just gonna become a matter of you either having someone watch you, squatting again in front of the mirror, or filming yourself to be able, that you, to, be able to see whether or not you're symmetrical in your, in your positioning in the way that you're squatting. Now, if this is, the, if this is what's happening to you, that you notice that you're putting one foot wider, or one foot narrower, or one foot, one toe more out than the other, then it is worth it to perform a thorough assessment because the reason why you might prefer to put one foot out or one toe out is it could be because of a joint mobility restriction, it could be because of a strength discrepancy, it could be because of a motor control issue. So essentially you're gonna have to work yourself backwards and try to figure out which one of those things is the one that's leading to that positional fault. So there you have it. Remember to look at the big picture and don't get too stuck up on one little detail or one thing that you hear in social media. It's important that you consider all possible factors that I outlined in this video. Technique, strength, joint mobility, and positioning so that you can have a more global understanding of what's causing yours. Catch you guys next time.